minor signs. And this clearly shows the truth of our Prophet Sallallahu Because no one could ever have predicted this. Is the rise of a race that was considered to be a backward race. And this is the race of the Atraq, the Turks, the Atraq. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prophesized that this race would become dominant and that they would conquer the Arabs. Now, who are the Atraq? The Atraq are a group of races. It's not just one race. Within the Turk, there are many races. It's like saying Arab. There are many Arab sub-races. It's one of the categories of human races. The Atraq are a group of races who originate in what is essentially Mongolia and the Caucasus Mountains, that region. You can say they are the cousins of the Mongolians. So the Mongolians are a race and the Atraq are a cousin race. They have a common ancestor between them. And that is why the Turkish language and the Mongolian language, they share many similarities. Now, contrary to popular misunderstanding, the modern Atraq, the people of Turkey, are not from that land of Turkey. They are from far more east than that. They are from a land that is what is now, we call it Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan were the Xinjiang provinces. Okay, that is the land of the Atraq. And the Atraq came from there and they eventually conquered what is now modern Turkey. And it was called Turkey because the Atraq came there. Before they came there, it wasn't called Turkey. That's not the name of that land. It was called Anadolia or other lands of that nature. Uh, the name Turkey, the country Turkey, is after the race, the Atraq, that eventually conquered that region. Originally, the Atraq were a far away from the Arabs. And the Arabs never interacted with them by and large. The Arabs hardly interacted with any race other than the Sassanids and the Byzantine Empire. For our Prophet Sallallahu in Medina to predict that that far away race is going to rise up and eventually dominate. What is the Ottoman Empire other than Turkish, right? This is one of those miraculous predictions. And by the way, these ahadith, were compiled centuries before the rise of the Ottoman Empire. You will find manuscripts, those who deny the authenticity of hadith, you will find manuscripts written in the 2nd, 3rd, 4th century, predicting the rise of the Atraq, and the Turks rose up 500 years ago, that's it. And there are many, many ahadith, the most famous amongst them, and the, these are also in Sahih Muslim, some of them. And there's a genre of hadith. The most famous amongst them, the Prophet used alliteration. Alliteration means he said things that sound the same and they have a level of eloquence. Utrukul atraka ma tarakukum. Utrukul atraka ma tarakukum. Leave the Turks as long as they leave you. Don't fight the Turks. Leave the Turk as long as they tarakukum, they leave you alone. Because when you will fight them, you will lose. And they will win over you. And that is exactly what happened. Now, some have said this could also be a prediction of the Mongol Empire. Because the, Mongol, the Mongolian race and the Turk are really kind of one race, as we said. They go back to the same heritage and even their language. And so a thousand years ago, it would not be incorrect to call the Mongols, the Genghis Khan, it would not be incorrect to call him an, a Turk, even though in modern times there are two separate ethnicities, the Mongolian and the, and the uh, Turkic races. However, others have said the prediction of Turk here is the Muslim Turks eventually, right? So eventually, this group of people, they came, amongst them were the Seljuks. So within the Turkish race, there were many famous dynasties, the most famous of the earliest dynasties was the Seljuk dynasty, Al-Parsalan. Al-Parsalan was the one who came to power and he was the first of the Turkish people to basically get a base in the lands of Islam and they converted to Islam. And of course, his main vizier was Nizam al-Mulk, the famous Nizam al-Mulk. So that was Al-Parsalan. The Seljuk Empire is not the same as the Ottoman Empire. They are both Turkic but the two of them biologically are different. So the first Turkish empire was the Seljuk empire. They were magnificent. They came, they conquered, and then they fizzled out. 
And then another group came, the Usmanlis, we call them the Ottomans, right? Those of you that are watching the Ertuğrul series, which is a mythic, uh, you know, romanticization of that. But it is, you know, the kernel of history is there. So the rise of the Usman tribe, Usmanli, Ottoman is the children of Usman. This is the second prediction. And our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam predicted that this empire and this group would become the dominant one. And that is exactly what happened, that when the Turks came, they eventually took over the Muslim land. And in the early part of the 16th century, 15, 15 or so, they requested from the final remnants of the Abbasid Empire to hand over the Khilafah to them. And so they then acquired the Khilafah. And from around 1500 CE up until 1927, as you know, the uh, Ottoman Empire was the caliphate of Muslim lands. And it was the only empire that claimed to be the Khalifa that were non-Arab. Before this point, the Seljuks never claimed to be Khalifa. The Seljuks were a rural dynasty. They never said they were the Khalifa. The Seljuks were in power when the Abbasids were the Khalifa. And they were a powerful dynasty, but they never said they were the Khalifa. And the Ottomans were the first non-Arab to say that they were the Khalifa of Islam. Another prediction also related to the Ottoman Empire is just as bizarre. And that is the conquest of the single greatest city in the history of the medieval world. A city that we would think of it like the New York or something of our times. And that is Constantinople. Once again, what is Constantinople? Constantinople for a thousand years was the bastion of Western civilization. And what will make us understand what Constantinople was? We hardly study history, we have no idea what Constantinople was. Constantinople, for over a thousand years, it was the capital of the Roman Empire. Constantine himself, Constantinople is named after him. Constantine the Great established the capital, the city existed even before then. And for a thousand three hundred years, it remained the capital of the greatest empire known to man up until that point in time. And that was the great Roman Empire. And Europe was nothing at the time. Europe was a backward land. Europe was barbarians at the time. Even Christianity has not spread in Europe when Constantinople was the center of Christendom and of the Holy Roman Empire. And the Prophet ﷺ predicted that the Muslims would one day conquer Constantinople. Again, an amazing prediction. How can a small group of persecuted people in Mecca dream, daydream of conquering Constantinople? But our Prophet ﷺ predicted that. Now, because of this, the Sahaba had it in their minds that they wanted to conquer Constantinople. And in fact, the first Sahabi to launch a campaign to try to conquer Constantinople was none other than Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan. When he was barely in his early 20s, he managed to come very close to Constantinople via the Navy fleet. As you know, they landed in Cyprus and then they landed on the banks of the Bosphorus and then they attempted to conquer the city, but it was way too powerful. They, see, they laid siege, but they could not. It was simply too powerful for them. And that is why the famous companion Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, he died outside of the walls of Constantinople. The famous companion, the one whom the Prophet ﷺ, he, he, he lived at in his house when he entered Medina. Can you imagine the same companion whom the Prophet ﷺ lived at his house for six months? How Allah ﷺ blessed the Ummah. How quickly did the persecuted rise up and become almost the conquerors of the world? That same companion, older on in life, he was of that batch who uh, attacked Constantinople and he passed away a shaheed. He died outside the city and he was buried in an anonymous graveyard until it was miraculously discovered when uh, Suleiman al-Fatih uh, opened it. The fact of the matter, you want my academic opinion, this is not the actual grave of, of Abu Yubal Ansari, the one that they claim to be. It is simply, uh, anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, I don't sugarcoat the reality. This is just uh, something that uh, the Ottomans did to shore up uh, PR, to make people like yani, feel yani, that they have something. But in reality, nobody knows where Abu Yubal is buried. Who's going to have marked the grave? How would they have known for a thousand years? Anyway, that's besides the point. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari's grave is somewhere. All I'm saying is the grave that they say that it is, it is actually, look it up historically. It is simply uh, 
constructed later on in history. The point being that the Sahaba attempted to conquer Constantinople and their eyes were on the prize. Many ulama and historians have said that Tariq ibn Ziyad, actually his main intention for going to Andalus was to make his way by land because he knew that by sea would not be possible because reinforcements, etc. He wanted to conquer land by land until he goes from North Africa to Andalus all the way to Constantinople. Some have presumed this and Allah knows best. The point is the eyes were on the prize. Many people wanted to conquer Constantinople, but of course it only happened in the year. Who knows what year Constantinople was conquered? What year? 14? 1453 by Muhammad or Muhammad al-Fatih by Sultan Muhammad al-Fatih. The Turks say uh, al-Fatih Muhammad. Uh, and the conquest of Constantinople changed the course of human history. It marked the end of one era and the beginning of another. Literally one of, you know, if you wanted to list the 10 most famous incidents in all of human history, the conquest of Constantinople is in the top five. It's that big of a deal that the Muslims finally conquered Constantinople. And this was predicted by our Prophet Sallallahu Hadith is a Sahih Muslim. That uh, a Sahabi asked Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, one of the Tabi'un asked him that which one will we conquer first? Constantinople or Rome? They had heard of Rome. Rome was there. But Rome was not to the power and the level of Constantinople. It was far number two. And so he said, bring me my book. So they opened up his book because uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Aus, he would write a hadith of the Prophet and his eyes were failing. He looked it up and he wanted to refresh his memory. And he said, no, the Prophet predicted that we would conquer Constantinople before Rome. And subhanAllah, Constantinople 1453. And, and in all likelihood, the other lands that are mentioned will be done during the time of the Mahdi. And Allah Azza wa knows best.